Let me go ahead and share our screen, our slide deck. Um, normally, we like to teach this class hands-on, but we don't feel like that's safe to do during the COVID pandemic. Um, there are lots of videos and we will share a video with you um, in the next few days. We'll share a video of this. Um, we'll have a follow up email and you'll get a, a video of this presentation, this class uh, via Zoom and you'll get a how to video from one of our mechanics and bike fleet manager, Jared, on fixing a flat tire. So. Um, my name is Rich Conroy. I'm the education director at Bike New York. And I feel like I'm pretty well qualified to teach this class because I used to be a mechanic at Metro Bicycle Stores in New York City. I fixed a lot of flat tires, both professionally and personally. My worst flat tire story, well, I mean, when I was a kid, I lived in an area of the country that has this invasive species plant called puncture vines that grow flat along the ground and they are just the worst. And they have little rock hard seeds with thorns on them. Um, and those thorns will go right through your bike tires. And when I was a kid, my bike perpetually had flat tires because of these darn things. And I didn't know how to fix them, uh, how to fix the flat tire. I didn't, couldn't figure out how to get the tire off and back on the wheel. I could get the wheel off, but I couldn't get the tire off. Um, fast forward to adulthood, my other worst flat tire story was I was doing a bike tour with my girlfriend um, from Pittsburgh to Washington, D.C. along the CNO and Great Allegheny Passage. And when we left, I thought my tires were in good shape. They were a few years old. Uh, but when we got on the CNO Canal Trail in Maryland, I had a three day stretch where I had like 12 flat tires. I ran off patches. My rear tire failed at the bead and um, we ended up walking a few miles in the rain in the Shepherdstown, West Virginia to a bike shop. Um, and whereupon I proceeded after buying new tires and tubes to get at least one more flat tire after changing um, changing the flat tire uh, to the tires. Um, luckily for me, she is still my girlfriend after all of that. Let's go ahead and share our screen. So uh, a little bit about Bike New York. We are a nonprofit organization based in New York City. Um, our mission is to promote cycling uh, through our events, the Five Rail Bike Tour, our membership program, local rides, and the ride that we're most well known for is the Five Rail Bike Tour. Um, of course, that didn't happen this year due to COVID because that tour is always the first weekend of May. Um, so our budget took a big hit. Um, we also had to shut down most of our education program due to COVID, but also the uh, budget hit caused by shutting down the Fiber of Bike Tour. So if you do uh, get something out of this class, this free class, please do make a donation or become a member of Bike New York. Um, so flat tire is the most common repair problem you're going to have on a bike. Uh, they happen to everybody. Even if you have tubeless tires, which are kind of a new technology, you're probably gonna get a flat tire sooner or later. Um, so uh, it's good to know how to do this because sometimes you it happens to you in a place where you can't just like jump onto a subway or call a cab and get you to a bike shop. Uh, so cover one, flat prevention. Uh, how to make sure you don't get flat tires or you reduce the likelihood of them. Second thing you'll we'll cover is tools uh, that you will need, supplies that you need. And then we'll go through step-by-step -step instructions on how to uh, change a tube if you do get a flat tire. We will not cover um, emergency repairs like booting a tire or patching a tube, which we have kind of a different fix a flat class for that. We can send you the uh, the recording from the Zoom class when we did do um, emergency repairs. So I do have everybody muted. 
right now. And this is just to cut down on background noise, um, dogs barking, dishes in the sink, loud children, TVs going, background phone conversations, things like that. If you do have a question, please put that question in chat or you can wait to the end. We'll uh, give you the chance to unmute yourself so that you can ask a question verbally. Uh, we tried to let people ask questions during the course of the class, but there's always some loud, noisy thing that happens that disrupts the class. All right, let's talk about flat prevention. Um, how to minimize the likelihood that you're gonna get a flat tire. First off is just inflate your tires to the recommended pressure range that's written on the side of the tire. Um, and that's gonna vary depending on the type of bike and the type of tire that you have. Um, you also wanna check uh, your tires for wear and replace worn tires. Uh, so, you know, periodically check for stuff that's embedded in the lining of the tire, the casing of the tire. You can inspect the outside of it, look for little bits of glass uh, that have gotten in there that may eventually work their way through and, you know, you can dig those out with a little tiny screwdriver or something like that. Um, you also want to check as your tires get older, check the sidewalls for wear. Uh, the sidewalls will start to dry out and the casing, which is usually a, a canvas or fabric material inside, will start to show. You might see some, some threads showing. That's a sign the tire's drying out. And if you do start seeing uh, fabric or what looks like maybe tearing fabric, it's time to replace those because all that pressure inside the tire is looking for a way to get out and uh, a weak dried out casing is one way for it to do that. And then you might want to use flat resistant or puncture resistant tires. Uh, most brands sell them, even bike manufacturers, their own house brands like Trek and Specialized have flat resistant tires. Uh, they usually have some kind of a hard lining inside the casing. Uh, like the, the best ones are probably Kevlar or Aramid that present prevent, sorry, sharp objects from going through, or they resist sharp objects. Now, if you run over a tack or a thorn and you just keep riding with it that way, it probably is going to eventually make its, make its way through if you don't remove it. Uh, if you do catch, like you can hear something, uh, if it's large enough, that's gotten stuck in your tire, and if you hear it, stop, inspect your tire, and pull that thing out. And hopefully it won't have gone through and caused a puncture because when you pull it out, it's gonna let all the air out. Um, oftentimes it's just a little piece of stone that's often has a, some sticky stuff on it like tar that gets stuck on the outside of your tire. And that's no big deal. But if you do see a puncture line thorn get caught in your, in your tire and remove it before your tire rolls around a few times. Okay, so let's talk about some things you're gonna need to fix a flat tire. So first off, uh, now I, I always carry, and I'll show you kind of how I do this, but make sure you have the right size of tube with you. And there's two things you're gonna need to know. One is the size of the tube and the tire that you have. Um, and that will be expressed as kind of a math equation where the first number represents the diameter of the rim on the tire, and the second number represents the width of the tire. Uh, and you need, to get, you need to get the first part exactly right. So if you have a 26 inch wheel like mountain bike or beach cruiser, you have to get a 26 inch tube. Um, if you have a hybrid that's a 700 C wheel, you have to get 700 C wheel. Sometimes these things um, are compatible with each other. So for example, uh, a 700 C hybrid tube like this size here might also be compatible with a 29 mountain bike size. Um, trying to think of some other situations where that's the case, or you might be able to get it close. The, the second number 
it does not have to be exact. So let's say your tire says 700 by 32 and you're in the target and they have a 700 by 28. Well, that's close enough. It's only four millimeters, it's gonna work. If that first number isn't right though, it's probably not gonna work. Uh, if you have a 700 by 36 top, uh, tire and the store you're at only has a 700 by 18 tube, that's a pretty big difference. That's a pretty skinny tube and it may, may not work very well inside that tire. Um, so get it kind of within the ballpark. Second thing you're gonna to need to know is what is the valve type that you have? Um, there's two types, the Presto, which is the skinny metal valve that tends to get used on higher end mountain bikes, higher end hybrids, and most road bikes. The Schrader valve is the same as the car valve, so it'll work at gas station pumps and um, that is the same type of valve that cars use. And you'll find that on older bikes, uh, less expensive bikes, older road bikes. Uh, if your rim is drilled with a hole that's big enough for the Schrader valve, you can fit a Presta valve in there because it's a smaller diameter but I would use two of these nuts that come with the Presta valves, one on the inside of the rim and one on the outside. That way there's no gap in there uh, where the tube can try to escape out, out of the larger hole if you're putting a Presta valve inside that wheel. So you're gonna need uh, one or more pumps. Um, if you're just inflating at home, I would recommend getting a floor pump with a gauge on it. If you are want to make sure that you can fix a flat tire and inflate your, your tires when you're on the road, when you're away from home, I would get what's called a frame pump or a portable pump. Now, I would not use these portable or frame pumps for routine weekly inflation. That's what you're your floor pump is for. Um, I have another example here of a frame pump and you'll notice this one has a hose on it. Um, so does this one, but it's, it's hidden inside the pump. I like a pump with a hose because they're easier to use. Uh, you're less likely to damage the valve stem by kind of like jerking the pump back and forth on the valve while you're inflating the tire. And this one comes from a company called Leezyme. Uh, Toe Peak also makes uh, a pump with a hose, the road morph and the mountain morph. Now, if you are, if your bike has Presta tube, the skinny metal valve, it's a pretty good idea to keep a valve adapter with you. Uh, for example, my floor pump at home only inflates Schrader valves. So I have to use a little adapter so that the pump head fits the same, uh, fits the same size as this Presta adapter and it just screws down on top of the, the Presta tube. Um, I, I'll keep a little seat wedge bag on my bike and in there I keep usually a patch kit for emergencies, and we're not gonna show you how to use that this evening. I keep a spare tube, and you should periodically check that tube. If it hasn't been used for a while, make sure it's not getting old and dried out. Just like inflate it, make sure it holds air. If it holds air, great. Take the air back out, fold it back up and put it in. And then I carry at least two, usually three, tire levers. And we'll show you how to use the tire levers later. Uh, not normally related to changing a flat tire, but I also keep a multi-tool in this little seat wedge bag um, so that if I need to make adjustments, I can do that. And there are some types of bikes, uh, like with a coaster brake or other types of special hub brakes, where you might need an extra tool to unscrew the brake or a brake arm from the rest of the bike and you need a seat wedge bag or some system 
for carrying all this stuff, depending on the size of the tube tubes that you need to carry. Whoops. A um, couple of other tools, especially if you have bolt-on hubs. So single speeds, fixed gears, uh, hubs that have internally geared uh, mechanisms, you're going to need a wrench to uh, remove the rear wheel. So um, if you're just doing it, this at home, a 15 or 17 mecha millimeter mechanics wrench will work. You can also use an adjustable wrench as long as you make sure the jaws of the wrench fit very precisely on the sides or the flats of the bolts that hold the, the rear wheel on. Um, you might need, as I said, a screwdriver to remove any kind of brackets or attachments for a hub brake, um, like a coaster brake on a kid's bike or a beach cruiser. You'll need either a flat or a Phillips screwdriver. Now, I've sometimes seen as a bike mechanic, home mechanics who try to repair things um, on their own with some tools that aren't really appropriate for the job. So in terms of your bolt-on hub, make sure you use a wrench that precisely fits the axle nuts. That means you don't use anything that doesn't really grip and has these kind of sharp jaws. So please no pipe wrenches, those are for pipes. No vice grips, no channel locks, no pliers. Um, as for substitute for tire levers, I would highly recommend not using a butter knife or a screwdriver as a tire lever. However, you might be able to use the opposite end of your handle as long as it doesn't have any sharp edges. But really tire levers aren't that expensive, so just go out and buy some tire levers. All right, so let's talk about step-by-step um, -step instructions. This is gonna be the bulk of our presentation here is how to do this. So then we're gonna cover back wheels because back wheels tend to be the ones that get flat tires the most often. And they tend to be because of the gears or coaster brakes or other kinds of issues, the most challenging um, to deal with in terms of like dealing with the chain and dealing with unhooking brakes or unhooking uh, internally geared hubs. Now we're not gonna cover every single scenario you're gonna see. We're, this is just gonna be basic instructions on fixing a flat tire on the most common types of bikes. So, well, oh no, you got a flat tire and there is no such thing as a convenient time to get one or discover that you have one. But uh, you can always get yourself out of this jam if you have the right stuff with you and you know how to do it. So most bikes are gonna use a gear system that looks like this, a cluster of cogs on the back wheel. And you wanna use your shifter to make sure that the chain gets moved to the smallest cog. So shift it to its uh, smallest cog give the pedal a spin so that the shifters uh, shift to that small, or the chain shifts to that smallest cog. The reason why you wanna do that is it'll be easier to remove the wheel uh, and most especially it'll be easier to put the wheel back on once you're done if the chain goes to that smallest cog and the derailleur's released all of its spring tension all the way over to the right side. And you're probably going to need to release your brakes. Um, so with a road bike, your brake release lever is usually right on the brake. When it's engaged all the way, it's usually pointed down. When it's released, it's pointed up. So you just rotate that little lever up. Uh, Campagnolo and some older types of brakes use a brake release mechanism on the brake lever itself, not the brake. The other really common type of brake uh, where you might need to release the brakes are uh, V-brakes on mountain bikes and hybrids. Um, and the way you release those is you kind of have to grab this curved noodle 
squeeze the two brake arms together and there's a little slot right here in this little swing arm where you can slide the cable through and it releases the cable from one side of the brakes and spreads the pads out. These types of bikes have wider tires and even when the tires are flat, it's gonna be hard to get the tire uh, through or around the brakes when they are engaged like this. Um, cantilever brakes, which are an older design, although they're still around on some bikes, uh, have a similar kind of mechanism where you release a straddle cable that connects the two sides of the brakes from, from one side, usually the, I guess this would be the right side. If you have disc brakes, you don't need to do anything. The disc brake rotor should just slide right out of the, the caliper without doing anything. And most bikes are gonna have quick release levers and what you're gonna need to do is just open the lever by, by flipping it 180 degrees. It might be a little tight. Um, if you have a front flat, you're probably going to need to, once you have it released in the open position here, unscrew the, the little nut on the opposite side of this lever. I don't have a picture of it here, but if you unscrew it three, four, five turns, you'll be able to clear the, the hub out of what are called the dropouts, which is this part of the frame or the fork that attached to the hub. Um, the hub, by the way, is the center part of the wheel here. Uh, you don't, usually don't need to do that with the back wheel. The front wheels have a little safety tab in them, uh, in the fork, to prevent the wheel from falling off if you don't have the quick release closed properly. And so you have to unscrew the quick release lever just enough to clear those safety tabs. The back wheel doesn't tend to have those safety tabs on the, on the frame down here. And uh, some people flip their bike upside down uh, to do this. I don't. Um, I just grab the bike by the saddle. I lift it up. And um, with my other hand, I uh, kind of manipulate the back of the derailleur. This is probably the cleanest part of the derailleur right here is a little tab and um, I clear the chain from around the cogs. I may shake the bike a little bit to let the, the hub drop out from these, these dropouts here. Um, or if I use have my third hand, I uh, might grab the wheel while I'm holding the derailleur and the seat to kind of push the wheel out of the frame. Wait, I don't have a third hand, that is a problem. Um, but usually it should drop out if you have the quick release open and if you have the brakes released. Okay, so your first job is to remove one edge of the tire all the way around the rim here. And this is where you're gonna to need to use your tire levers. And when you are removing, whoops, removing or prying the, the tire off of the rim, you start opposite from the valve. If you try to start around here, the valve's probably gonna give you some trouble. Um, it, it's a little tighter right there because of the valve. So start over here. Uh, one thing you might do, I'm gonna suggest, and I don't have a picture of it, is pinch the tire all the way around so that it separates the bead, the part that clamps the tire to the rim, uh, separates that bead from the rest of the rim. It'll make your life a little bit easier. Or it might have already happened uh, just because you got a flat tire. So your tire lever has two ends to it and each of those ends has a specific purpose. So this end right here is the spade and it's sort of got a spoon or a spade shape to it. And the other end has a hook. And as you can see, I'm digging or hooking the spade end underneath the edge of the tire. This part of the tire is called the bead right here. And that's when the tire is inflated, that's what holds the bead uh, to the rim. And I can help myself a little bit by grabbing the tire, as you can see with my hand, pulling back a little bit to expose that bead and 
getting the tire lever underneath the edge of that beam. And uh, believe me, the, this part of the job, you do have to use some hand and some arm strength for it. Um, but once I have it pried under there, what I'm gonna do is pry that tire lever over the edge of the rim with a 180 degree motion. So right now I have it pointed straight up. When I'm done prying here, it's gonna be pointed, the other end of the tire lever will be pointed towards the rim. Once I've done that, um, you can sort of see I'm, I'm holding the tire against my, my body, my torso here, holding the wheel uh, just to brace it. And you can see I'm holding the lever with my fist and I'm trying to slide the lever towards me underneath that bead. And it should kind of peel it off, peel it over the edge of the tire. I'm sorry, the edge of the rim. Now, sometimes the tire and the rim are a very tight combination with each other. And you can't do this, like slide the lever underneath the bead towards you and peel it off. Uh, it just won't move, it's too tight. So that's what the hook is for. You can hook your tire lever on a spoke. You can see the other end is underneath the bead and it's pried that part of the bead over the edge of the rim. About one or two inches away, I am going to stick the tire lever behind the bead again, basically do this, put it back in this position, and I'm gonna pry the next section over. And then I'm gonna try sliding the lever towards me underneath the bead, trying to peel that tire off. And usually the second tire lever will do it, but sometimes things are so tight that I have to use a third lever and the third lever will definitely do it. So kind of know what your tire rim combination is like. Some are just easier and looser than others. So then what you're doing is you are prying the edge of the tire, peeling the edge of the tire all the way off all the way around, which means the other side is still mounted on the rim. All you need to do to remove the tube is get one side exposed, one side peeled off all the way around. Then I can reach in there and pull that tube out. Uh, and once again, I'm gonna start pulling that tube out on the opposite side from the valve stem. The valve stem will come out last. And uh, before you get distracted or in too much of a hurry, um, a word of the wise here, when you pull that valve stem out, leave the tube in the same orientation where it came out of the tire. Because what you can do is put the tube kind of over the tire outside, pump it up with your pump, and listen for any leaking air. Uh, it might be easy to find, or it may be such a small puncture, like a, a slow leak, that you know it's hard to find. So if I can't hear it, like there's too much traffic noise or outdoor noise, or the leak is, is too minute, too small, what I can do, and again, you have to pump your tire up, it's the tube up, it's gonna look like kind of a balloon, is I put it close to my face, the little fuzzy hairs on my face, you can sort of feel it. You might be able to hear it even as you pass the tube past your face. Um, it, it probably won't explode. I don't think I've ever had that happen to me, as long as you don't like overinflate it. But you want to get it plenty of air in there so that air is leaking out. Um, if you were doing this at home and you can't find the leak, the other way to find it is to fill a sink or a bucket with uh, water, with plenty of water, and put your inflated tube in there, valve stem first, and you check the inflated tube section by section until you go all the way around. And somewhere 
you're going to see if there is indeed a puncture, a stream of bubbles coming out. It may be a steady fast stream, or if it's a slow leak, it'll be a little blip, blip, blip. If it's just one bubble that pops up, it's just an air pocket that was trapped when you put the tube in the water. It's got to be like a regular steady stream of bubbles coming out of there. And what I do then is just mark, mark the tube where the patch is. Um, and I try and find, I, I look in that area of the tire first to see if I can find something that went through the tire. Um, so I, but I, I check the tire all the way around regardless, because there might be something else. I have experienced uh, something where I got a flat in one area of the tube, inspected the tire where I thought the sharp object went through and um, missed something else in another area of the tire. So what I do is I visually inspect the outside of the casing for any little stuff that might be embedded in there. And while I'm doing that, I'm very gently brushing my fingers inside the casing of the tire all the way around. Um, you don't want to, like a sharp object, like a tack or a piece of wire, uh, you know, giving you a pretty good cut. Um, you also want to inspect the rim. There's a cloth or rubber or sometimes it's a plastic strip that covers the spoke holes where the spokes are attached to the rim. You want to make sure all of the spoke holes are covered and that there's no damage to the rim strip or nothing sharp, like no burrs of unfiled metal inside the rim. Uh, so there's some things to look at. Obviously, you know, most flats are caused by a sharp object coming through the tire and you want to find where that sharp object went through. Sometimes it falls out and you don't find it. If you have two little holes next to each other, 99% of the time that is caused by riding on an underinflated tire that hits some sort of an edge, like the edge of a pothole, edge of a curb on a driveway, like a little lip on a driveway, uh, some sort of a pavement imperfection. And what happens is the tire compresses against the rim because it's way too soft. You shouldn't be riding with it that soft. And it pinches the tube in between the tire and the rim. So it creates two little holes right next to each other. If you have a giant hole or tear, that can be caused by a variety of circumstances. Obviously, a, an old or defective uh, damaged tire that gives way under a lot of air pressure is, is one cause. Um, the other cause is when you put a new tube in or you're installing a new pair of tires, you don't get it inflated, uh, I'm sorry, installed quite evenly. And as you're inflating it, one edge of the bead comes loose from the rim and all of a sudden you've got an exposed area uh, where the tube, which now is full of air, is trying to get out and it will come out with a big bang. And then finally, uh, another cause that's not repairable, at least in terms of the tube, is the valve stem uh, gets worn out right where it joins the tube and you can't patch that uh, and oftentimes that's caused by, again, riding your bike with the tube underinflated and the valve stem sort of starts to move or shift inside the tire and the rim so that it's sitting there at kind of a weird angle. Um, so you can usually repair a snake bite flat with a fairly sizable patch. Uh, you can patch a pinhole. A blowout, your tube is done, and please inspect your tire uh, for where that happened, why it happened. Another reason for a blowout is the bead. This can be hard to see. The bead becomes separated from the rest of the tire, maybe for an inch or two, and that's all it takes is, you know, you've got 100 pounds of pressure inside that tire, and that's the space where it finds to get out, is right where that separation is. Okay, so uh, make sure you find the cause of the flat. 
uh, you inspect the tube, you inspect the tire, uh, you check for sharp objects. If it was a big blowout, check for damage to the tire. Um, a lot of people will uh, take that old tube, the, the flat tube out, then they're ready to go. They put their new tube back in, they pump it up, they get ready to go and bang, they get a flat tire right away because they didn't remove the sharp object um, or find the defect in the tire. And so now you have a second flat tire to fix and you run out of your only spare tube. So make sure that you check and find the source of the damage, the cause of the damage. Okay, so um, when you have your good tube and you're ready to install it, what you wanna do is pump it up just enough so that it holds its shape, that it's got a little bit of air in it. You don't wanna pump it up any more than that because it won't fit inside the tire. Okay, and uh, this time you are going to put the valve stem in first. And remember, you're going to stuff that tube in on the side of the tire that you pried off from the rim. I've taught these classes before and people will start to put the tube in on the other side. I'm like, well, you can't do that because that side's installed on the rim. Uh, you need to put it back in on the side that the old tube came out of, the exposed open side. So the valve stem goes in first. And if I have a, a Presta valve like this skinny one here, um, most of the time these come with a little nut, the valve itself is threaded. And I screw the nut down just to kind of hold the valve in place. And then I work my way around stuffing the tube inside the tire which is usually pretty easy unless you overinflated it. If you get towards the end and you have, you know, eight inches of tube that you can't seem to get in there, either your tube is too big or you put too much air in it. And then uh, what I do is I push the tube and the tire over so the tube is resting over the rim, not outside the rim. And you don't want a little bit of exposed tube like this because you, as you start to push the tire, edge of the tire over the rim, this will get tighter and tighter and tighter and then we'll get pinched and it will um, cause a puncture, a pinch flat in the tube. So once I have the tube uh, inside the tire and kind of pushed over so it's resting inside the rim also, I start to work one edge of the tire all the way around. I start to work it back onto the rim because it's still exposed and sitting out there. And you're going to start doing that at the valve stem. You don't want to end here. You want to start here. It'll just be easier. And usually you have to push the valve stem up into the rim a little bit. Push the bead. This is the bead right here over the rim using your thumbs and work away from the valve on both sides. And you're going to work your way uh, on both sides so that you should end up more or less opposite the valve stem where you started when you were removing the tire. And depending on your tire, this last little bit, this last six to eight inches may be super easy and you can put it on with your fingers and your thumbs, or it can be really hard and you're going to need your tire levers to help you. If you can, try to push that last little bit over using your thumbs. What happened here? Okay. If you cannot, if the tire is too tight, um, to get that last six to eight inches of tire over the edge of the rim, you can use your tire lever to help you. Uh, but there's a certain trick to it because a lot of people just stick their tire lever up in here and try and pry it over. And what happens is the 
the spade or the spoon end of the tire lever, catches the tube inside there, pinches it with all that leverage and pressure, and now you have an instant flat tire before you even could put the pump back on. So what you want to do is use your tire lever to sort of peel or slide that last tough, difficult part back on. So in other words, don't stick your tire lever up here. We'll show you how to do that because sometimes you might need to do it, but really try to do it this way. So you're going to notice that there's a section here, this part, tire is already seated over the rim. We put that back on and then there's a part that crosses over and the section that's still not installed yet. So just behind that crossover point, you're going to use one hand to pull the tire back and you're going to push the tire lever between the rim and the edge of the tire. And notice I have my spoon or my spade side facing out, which is the opposite way of how I remove the tire. I have the, the spade prying underneath the edge of the tire, but this time I have the spoon or the spade facing out. And what I'm gonna do is with that tire lever sort of more or less pointing straight up away from the wheel, and I'm holding it with my fist. I'm going to use my other hand to pull back on the tire. And I'm bracing the tire against my body or against something. And as I pull back with this hand, I'm pulling towards me with the tire lever. And that should slide yeah, slide the edge of the, the bead here, the edge of the tire, over the rim, all the way around. Oops. And that's what it looks like. Okay, so, uh, but that, and you, you have to use a fair amount of strength, both in terms of pulling the tire back and pulling the lever towards you when it's pointing away from the rim, from the wheel. Now I'm going to show you uh, one more method. I don't have good pictures of it, and it's not one that I recommend, but sometimes you run into a tire that ostensibly fits on that rim. It's the same size, but you just can't get it on there using the method I saw. You can try using one or two tire levers to pry that bit of tire, that last six or eight inches over the rim. But, and here's how you do it. So um, you take your tire lever and you have the hook end pointing towards the hub, the center of the wheel, and you have the spade end pointing towards the rim and you put the spade in underneath the tire or between the tire and the rim and that spade end is going to be hooking on the edge of the rim. Now you may have six or eight inches here so don't try to pry it all over in one bite. That you will definitely break something. Uh, you'll break the tire lever or uh, puncture the tube uh, with a pinch flat. Once I have it inserted up in here, I slide it over so it's right next to this crossover point here, maybe right here, and then I pry it over. And you might have to do that method two or three times, an inch at a time, two inches at a time, pushing it up in there, sliding it over close to the crossover point, prying it over. And there's, there's a decent chance you could still pinch and puncture the tube with the tire lever doing it this way. So this is a last resort. Really don't try to use your levers to pry that last difficult um, bit of tire over. But if you do have to do it, that's how you do it, a little at a time.
Okay, now I don't inflate the tire yet. I'm gonna wait until I have the whole thing back on the bike. Um, and the way I do this is I start to guide the wheel back into the frame and I'm gonna look at the chain as if it has a top half and a bottom half. The bottom half is the part that comes out of the back derailleur. And you wanna make sure the chain doesn't have any twists or crossovers. Uh, it needs to be a nice loop of chain. Top half, I'm gonna hook on that smallest cog. If you have disc brakes, you're gonna to need to start guiding the disc rotor on this opposite side into the disc caliper. If you have rim brakes, just make sure that as you guide your wheel into the frame, that the tire is going between the brake pads. Sometimes it likes to uh, get in at a funny angle and hooks on the, catches on the brake pad and then you can't seem to figure out how to get the wheel centered into the frame. So make sure you're guiding it between the brake pads. And you're gonna guide the hub, whether it's a bolt-on axle or this quick release. By the way, this is the opposite side of the quick release with the little adjusting nut on this side. Um, and you want that adjusting nut loose enough so that the quick release isn't catching on these dropouts of the frame here. Guide it in there and usually it just drops right in. Uh, now this is a, a more modern bike with what's called horizontal dropouts. Um, you might have, I'm sorry, it's vertical dropouts. You might have a longer like inch, inch and a half long dropout that's more diagonal like this. And that might be a slightly different procedure, but if the vertical dropouts like this, the wheel is centered automatically in the frame, assuming the wheel itself isn't bent or the frame isn't bent. With the horizontal dropouts, you gotta make sure that the hub is spaced exactly the same from front to back on both sides so that the wheel isn't rubbing on the frame or the brakes somewhere. And then you might need to tighten that adjusting nut a little bit, um, especially if you are changing the front tire, like you had to remove the front wheel, you'll need to re-tighten this adjusting nut a few turns. How do you know you have it tight enough? So right now the lever here is in the closed position. Um, this isn't actually a very good pair of pictures because it, the lever ends up pointing up both ways. Uh, if I was to close this lever now in this position, it would be pointing straight down. Uh, but when you got to close it, you should start to get resistance halfway closed. If you start to close it and you go three quarters of the way and it's still pretty loose, you need to tighten that adjusting nut on the opposite side. Um, if it starts to give you resistance halfway closed, you're probably in pretty good shape go ahead and pull it closed all the way. When it is closed, try to, try to grab it and rotate it all the way around. It should not rotate at all in the closed position. You shouldn't be able to move it. If your wheel has uh, axle nuts, you put the axle nuts back on, you really don't even need to ever take them off, but you might need to. Uh, just get them tight on both sides using the wrench. Uh, if you had to remove a brake arm or disconnect a brake, disconnect uh, your internally geared hub on the back, make sure you hook those things back up before you go out and ride. Once I have the wheel uh, installed, I um, go ahead and pump it back up to its inflated pressure. As you are doing that, please watch the tire carefully on both sides all the way around as you start to get more and more pressure in there. Because one thing that can happen is if the tire didn't get installed evenly, and this probably won't be a problem with very tight tires, but pretty loose tires that are less expensive, it's easy to for the tube to start pushing one part of the bead off of the rim 
and then you're putting more and more air in there and the tube explodes in that little exposed spot that, that it pushed over the edge of the rim. So make sure that it's seating evenly, that the part of the tire isn't being pushed off the rim by the tube as you inflate it. Uh, let me go back to Presta tubes. I wish you'd have a picture here. Just in terms of inflation, So your Presta tube has a little, once you have this black cap off, the Presta tube has a second little valve that you have to unscrew. And um, if it's not unscrewed, you're not getting air in there. So make sure you unscrew that. The Schrader tube, you do have to remove this black cap, but it has a spring-loaded valve that when you clamp the pump hose or the pump onto the valve, air pressure itself is enough to push that spring valve down and put air in the tire. Uh, when you're done inflating, you remove your pump. Uh, your pump head's probably gonna have a little uh, clamp lever. You put it down on there, you flip the clamp lever so you have an airtight seal on the valve, um, and you go ahead and inflate. When you go to remove the pump, release that clamp lever on your pump head uh, you'll probably hear a little psh, which is air coming out of the hose usually, not the tube, and remove uh, the pump head from the valve. With these Presta valves, then you want to screw that valve back in without pushing down on it. If you push down on it, you will let some air out of the tube. Okay, so you are all buttoned up with the tire. You want to make sure that you reconnect your brakes. With road brakes, it's just pushing that lever back down. With V brakes, uh, make sure that you put the cable in the slot at the top of this swing arm here. And then this curved piece glides into that swing arm and it has a little bit that sticks out from the swing arm and then this is a kind of a rubber hood or it keeps dirt from getting inside up in here if you're riding in like dirty conditions. And then you know before you get on your bike make sure you give the wheels a spin so that if anything is rubbing which is usually a brake or maybe the wheel didn't get put in evenly um, that you're brakes are not rubbing on the rim or rubbing on the tires. Uh, if you do find that, sort of figure out what went wrong. Either the brakes aren't, got knocked out of alignment, or maybe the wheel didn't get put in evenly and clamped evenly when you um, went to close it, tighten it. And then you're done. You know, go off and ride um, and congratulate yourself on fixing a flat tire. And that is the end of our uh, slide deck on how to fix a flat tire. And I'm gonna stop the share here. And we're gonna see how we're doing with questions in the chat. And I'm gonna unmute folks. Or actually, I can't unmute you, but you can um, unmute yourself to ask questions if you want. We have no questions in the chat right now. So uh, please do ask any questions about uh, fixing a flat tire, anything that I presented on. Uh, I was just gonna say, I think it's looking a bit beyond my current skill level, but really good tips on things to look out for, how to be careful, how to be, you know, even just sort of making sure that I don't get to the point of having a flat tire, at least not too often. So super helpful. Thank you. Yeah. You know, even if it's, so as I said, this is best taught hands-on and um, even if you don't feel like you still know how to do it, at least take the stuff with you. Like if you're going on a long ride, 
outside of a city or to an area of the city that doesn't really have bike shops nearby, at least have a pump, a spare tube, tire levers, the tools that you're going to need to change the tire on your bike. Because chances are somebody's going to come along, another cyclist, and they do know how to do it. Ah, thank you. They don't, they can't help you if you don't have a spare tube or you don't have stuff with you. And um, some people are nice and will loan you their tube, but, or give you their tube, but then that means, well, what happens if they get a flat? So even the first part of that, carrying the right stuff with you is, uh, is important. Awesome, thanks. Other questions? It looks like we don't have any questions tonight. That's unusual. Um, so I'm going to end the meeting, but I do thank you for joining us. And uh, I hope you don't get flat tires, but if you do, that uh, you feel like you're prepared. And then, you know, if you do have somebody around, a friend, a significant other who does know how to do this, what I would recommend is that uh, they walk you through it, but but you're the one with the hands on the bike, on the tire, on the wheel, on the tools, um, not them. I, I've run into people who've got flat tires who said, well, my dad, my sister, my wife, my uncle showed me how to do this, but they didn't actually do it themselves. It is better to get the hands-on experience. Uh, there are also some great YouTube videos. We will share our uh, video from our bike fleet manager who uh, also goes through this with a video and not just still pictures. Uh, have a good night, everyone, and uh, hope to see you out there on the road. Thanks again. Yep.